All right, guys, so my wife and I just finished watching the movie Nefarious. Uh, it's still in the theaters. It came out in April of 2023. And some of my thoughts on the movie and more so how this correlates to a book that was actually written back in 1938 and held and hidden from the public until uh, roughly 2011. So I'll go into my thoughts on Nefarious first, and then I want to talk to you more so than about the movie about this book that was kept from everyone for, uh, man, 1940, you know, almost 70 years, 70 plus years. So, and why was it kept? And we'll, we'll go into that. So first off, let's talk about the movie. The movie Nefarious was promoted as a horror film. Did I think it was really a horror? Uh, not in the typical sense of, of how we would normally think of a horror movie. There wasn't a lot of like scenes that had you jumping out of your seat or uh, big scare moments. More so the horror, I would say, is the spiritual horror of, man, there is a battle going on between good and evil and overall as a society as a global community we're losing right and um so that part is pretty scary the people coming out of the theater i heard multiple women coming out of the theater one lady said man i feel sick after watching that after some of the scenes uh and how the movie kind of a couple scenes in the movie that were pretty um, gnarly and, and made you feel really uncomfortable. Um, but if anything else, the movie had you leave thinking, right? I watched multiple people come out and they were talking about the movie. I know for myself, my wife and I probably spoke for an hour and a half on the topic of not just the movie, but what the movie has you start to the conversation that the movie spikes up. So, uh, from that aspect, it was very interesting in, um, it was very thought provoking. So the movie, without giving too much away, goes into the conversation between a psychologist and a man in prison who is possessed by a demon or claims to be possessed by a demon. And as this goes, you know, going on through the book. I don't want to give the movie away, but basically the demon wants this psychologist to write his manifesto and to basically call to action the, the people of the world to join his side in fighting back against God. And as we've spoke about in some of our other videos, as we spoke about at our Protector Summit, and uh, if you've tuned into some of our podcast episodes, we've talked about this on multiple occasions about God created us in his image and the devil cannot attack God and beat God. If he could, he wouldn't have been cast with the legion of angels all cast down to earth and now considered demons, right? They wouldn't have been cast out if they had been able to win. So God can't beat the devil. So what he does is he just tries to destroy God's image bearer. We are the image bearers. It says in the Bible that God created us in his image. So the devil and the demons attack us to get at God. So the, the movie kind of talks about this and how that actually happens. Um, and if you just look at our society today, look at how many things attack the image or to attack the creation. I'm guilty of it. I have tattoos. Is that destroying the image of God? Is that destroying the image bearer? You know, I thought it was cool when I got them. Now at 40 something years, I'm not saying don't go get tattoos. I'm just saying, think of all the things that we do to destroy our bodies and destroy the image of God. We'd have, um, you know, tattoos, piercings. Look how many people are getting plastic surgery right? Look how many people are confused with their gender identity, right? People now getting children to change their, uh, change their, or try to change their sex through 
surgeries or hormone treatments, all these different things of God created us and we're not happy with, with our creation. We need to modify ourselves. Um, this is just one example, one small example on a much bigger, much, much, much bigger discussion. But the interesting thing with the, with the movie is there's a lot of correlations to a book that I've read that was released in 2011 called Outwitting the Devil. So toward the end, so spoiler alert real quick, if if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want a little spoil, spoiler, uh, go ahead and just jump forward like 30 seconds. But the end of the movie, the psychiatrist has a book and the book was supposed to be uh, was supposed to be the manifesto, the call to arms for the demon, right? But God intervened at the last second because the psychiatrist called out to God to save him or for help, and God intervened and gave him another chance. And in this, he now writes the manifesto that the demon had brought him, but as a warning of saying this is what the devil's plan is and this is how he's going to attack you or this is how he's attacking us um which brings me to the thing of a book written by napoleon hill now if you've never heard of napoleon hill um napoleon hill is an author, he was more of like a scientist than a spiritual kind of person in most of his writings. He was very like analytical, more came across like a psychologist, more came across like a engineer or a scientist. And many of the things he was talking about was energy and wavelengths and uh, harmonics and vibration and all this kind of stuff. And taking a lot of the science into how do you become successful, but from a scientific standpoint, more than a spiritual standpoint. So Napoleon Hill, back in 1937, wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. It's an amazing book. I've read it multiple times. Um, if, if you've never read Think and Grow Rich, I highly recommend it. It's a great book with a lot of really good... Um, things to take away on on how you can be successful and people think of the title think and grow rich and they're thinking money it's think and grow rich as far as being rich in your way of life rich in being in a form of abundance um and in a form of success not necessarily money although money may be a byproduct of the riches that you receive so that was a book he wrote in 1937, and it was a huge hit. Uh, it was a bestseller. You know, people were were eating this book up, um, and it was kind of I don't want to say this was the start of self help or whatever, but it was one of those books that was like one of the flagship books of really getting the momentum going on how to how do you become an entrepreneur? How do you become successful? How do you take charge of your life and win? And after about a year, he was wondering, why is it that I gave everyone the, the checklist of what to do to win, but people are still failing? How is that possible? And Napoleon Hill believes or had said that the devil came to him and they had a conversation now, many say that this was a, a metaphor, right, or a fictional story that he put into the, the form of like a conversation or an interview. And that's for us to determine or, you know, I, I don't know if he actually interviewed the devil or not, or if this was just a screenplay or a um a conversation that he basically just put in that format but in 1938 napoleon hill claims or wrote a book called outwitting the devil where he had the opportunity to sit down and speak to the devil 
and have an interview from the devil's perspective of how he plans or how he is currently taking control and manipulating and putting into bondage the people of the world. And in this, he breaks down how the devil has come in and and he doesn't have the power to take over us because God gave us free will. So in this, the devil goes through a series of incremental, um, like an incremental process of how we allow him. He gives us temptations, gives us offerings, and we accept those, right? He tells us lies and we believe them and we make agreements or we make it, we accept and the byproduct of that is normally going to be negative things in our life. Things that might give us the short-term win, or the short-term high, the short-term success, um, but long-term it puts us in bondage. And we can look at many examples of this uh, all around the world. You look at, all, let, let's take something that's right out in front of everyone. You take the people in Hollywood who want to get in and you have this whole thing with that happened with Harvey Weinstein. So Harvey Weinstein's the gatekeeper into Hollywood. There's thousands of women who want to get a, a shot at being in Hollywood and want to be famous and be in a movie. Then you have a scumbag like Harvey Weinstein who says, well, if you want to do it, there's sexual favors that come with that. And there's women, lots of them who did those. They sold their soul, right? Um, like, you know, the, the saying goes, right? Um, and did things that they shouldn't have done, but it was worth it for the reward that was going to come of it, right? So they did get that that scene in the movie. They did get the opportunity to be a, a singer or whatever and get that contract. And now they're living as millionaires and they're here all these people have been holding this guy up because he's been the gatekeeper to Hollywood, Right? But at the same time, you know, they have this emotional damage that they now have to hold on to knowing that they've done things that they shouldn't have done to just to get that position. So there's there's many things like that that we do, whether it's with our diet, whether it's with relationships, you know, affairs whether it's with business deals where maybe you do a scumbag move and you screw someone over just to get ahead, right? There's lots of examples of this. But in this book where Napoleon Hill interviews the devil, right, it talks about how the devil is going to take over the school systems. It talks about how the devil was going to work through politics. It talked about how the devil is going to work through our media outlets, right, it talked about how the devil was going to take over our children and start the children out young, going through the parents to um, to get to the, the children quickly and start them at a younger age. All these things, right, that if you were to read the book right now, you would think that this book was written by some ultra conservative person um, like a year ago. But the thing is, this was written in 1938, before this stuff happened. This is prior to World War II, right? The war hadn't happened. We, we weren't in this technology age with all this different stuff. Our schools weren't doing uh, drag queen story hour with, with books that are super controversial um, sexualizing the children, whether you agree with it or not, it's a very controversial thing. But this wasn't happening in 1938. So what happens is Napoleon Hill writes this book again in uh, 1938, one year after he had this bestseller, Think and Grow Rich. His wife comes to him and says, Napoleon, please... Do not release this book. People are going to think you're crazy. Again, he's not a big spiritual guy. He's more of a scientist. So in writing a book about him interviewing the devil, well, the adverse to that is if there is a devil, then now there has to be a God. And 
Now he's making his once were psychological and scientific books. Now this brings in a whole spiritual element. And this is not what his books and his, you know, whole thing was about. So the other thing is it starts calling out the politicians. It's calling out the schools. It's calling out the media. It's calling out our healthcare system. It's calling out and challenging all these big organizations saying that down the road, you guys are going to be the ones who let the country down and keep everyone in bondage through the actions that you're going to be doing in the future because the devil is using you and the devil is using your system to get back at God and is going to be holding all these people in bondage from reaching their true potential. And she's like, please do not release this. Do not release this. And he doesn't. He said, okay, I'll think about it. I'll give it some time. In the meantime, Napoleon Hill goes on to write tons of other books, all books, all these books are great. But Napoleon Hill never releases the book. And in 1970, he dies. And Annie, his wife, says she inherits the, the business or his, his publishings. And she says to the publishing agency, because they're like, what are we going to do with this book? She's like, as long as I'm alive, we're not releasing that book. My husband has a very good reputation. He's built a you know, I'm, I'm using this term. This isn't necessarily factual. He, he's built like this empire on all these books. He's made a super positive impact. People love him. His books are selling by the millions. I don't want to taint his name and his reputation by releasing this book that basically says that all these people are working for the devil. So the book stays in the vault. They never release it. And he goes on and she keeps it in the vault until 1984 she dies the book then gets passed on to charles johnson that's the nephew of napoleon hill's wife and he was the president of the napoleon hill foundation at the time and he's like i wonder if we should release this there's a lot of good information and now at this point we're in the 80s going on the 90s and some of this stuff is starting to show up and Charles is looking at this. He's like, man, there's a lot of stuff in this book that is actually coming to fruition. I wonder if we should release this. And his wife, uh, Frankie, she's like, no, I, I agree with Annie. This book needs to stay in the vault. Do not release it. The company's doing good. The Napoleon Hill Foundation has a great reputation. Everything's going good. The only thing that can happen of releasing that book is negative. Like it's the risk is not verse, worth the reward. So Charles goes, okay. And Frankie says, as long as I'm still alive, I don't want that book released. I agree with Annie. It needs to stay in the vault. So uh, Charles doesn't release it. And later on, uh, Frankie dies and... Charles basically says, now this is later on, this is probably roughly around in the 2000s, early 2000s. And Charles said, you know, I made a promise to my wife, Frankie, that I would not release this book. So Charles passes it on to Don Green. Don Green is now the CEO of the um, Napoleon Hill Foundation. And Don Green looks it over and for years, Don Green is kind of like, ah, what do I do with this? So finally, he hands it over to the, the publishing agency, Sterling Publishing, and says, we have this book. What do we do with it? Sterling goes, well, Napoleon Hill is not writing books anymore. And maybe we release it because, you know, we can't get any more books out of him. We have this one book that's sitting in the archives. We could release one more book. It's controversial, but, you know, I don't know if controversy is necessarily a bad thing. So it wasn't until 2011 that this book was released. And I remember reading this in 2011 when it came out because I'd read all these other books by Napoleon Hill at this point. And when they were like, we're releasing this book that Napoleon Hill called Outwitting the Devil that was written back in 1938, 
I was intrigued. Why did they not release this book? What was so bad in this book that it shouldn't be released? And when I read it, again, it was like they literally had... It was like Napoleon Hill had just wrote the book because everything that he was writing about, you're like, yeah, that's happening right here. Yeah, that's happening right there. Oh my gosh, the, all this stuff that they're saying makes sense, right? But again, this book was written before all this happened. And now it's released and it's on the Full Spectrum Warriors reading list. If you're on our university, you've seen that I have this book on here. I've probably bought this book 10 times and normally I would hold it up and show you a copy, but I keep handing it out and I buy them in the bulk and I hand the books out to people to read and sometimes they give them back and then I give them to someone else. Now with audiobooks, you can just listen to it on audiobook. Uh, if you don't have the time, reading it is usually more impactful, but if you don't have the time to read it, I would check it out on audiobook. But if you've watched the movie Nefarious and you've read this book, right? You basically watch Nefarious and you go, they've taken the uh, outwitting the devil and they've put it into a cinematic story or they put it into uh, like a little screenplay, whether it, you're reading um, the 2016 book, A Nefarious Plot, which was the movie version uh, or was the book that they made the movie Nefarious off of, right? But I don't know if the author has ever read Outwitting the Devil or not. But if you finish up watching the movie Nefarious, again, spoiler alert, fast forward 10, 15 seconds. So if you've watched the movie and at the very end of the movie, when he is in the interview with Glenn Beck and you have the book that's sitting on the table and he said, yeah, this was the devil's manifesto. This was the devil's call to action, but I modified it to make it a warning so you understand what the devil's game plan is. That is the book Outwitting the Devil. So if you want to know what was in the book at the end of the movie, I suggest that you go check out Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, whether you do it on audiobook or you read it, because it is a very, very good outline on how the devil is working in a way to keep you from reaching your true potential. If you don't believe in God and you don't believe in the devil, you could read the book anyway or listen to that audiobook anyway. Take the spiritual part out of it. Think of it from a factual standpoint of that is an analogy or like a metaphor for um, the shortcomings or how distractions in your life will keep you from reaching your true potential. Um, but again, the Farius, I think was a good movie. It, the dialogue was very thought provoking as far as a horror movie goes. Was it a, were you jumping out of your seat and all that stuff? No. Um, but the dialogue was really good. The scary part is from a spiritual standpoint, understanding that there is a spiritual war going on behind the scenes, right? And where do we fall within that? And how are we contributing to the devil's army or God's army? How are we being manipulated and used? How are we being uh, influenced by the things happening around us? And again, I think for deeper understanding of the movie Nefarious, you should read or listen to Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. So hopefully that helps. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we can keep this conversation going.